Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. It is now Tuesday, the 20th day of August, 2024. And what I'm going to go over with you today, especially the front part of it, is truly hard to believe. Hence the headline on today's thumbnail. It is very hard to believe. Why? Well, let me explain. Let's get started. I think you'll understand right out of the gate. So this is the graph you are used to seeing charting Atlantic hurricane and tropical storm activity going back from 1944 to 2020. They need to update this. I mean, come on. But anyway, this you've seen it. And uh, it's the distribution of hurricanes and tropical storms throughout the season. And we are roughly around this point right in here. August 20th, and typically activity ramps up very quickly towards uh, mid-September or so, and then drops off, and uh, as they say, we are here. So that might be the case. We've had a busy season so far, five named storms, uh, three hurricanes, all three hurricanes have hit land, and uh, we've had some pretty uh, serious impacts from barrel, certainly. Earliest Category 5 on record, and we had Ernesto, still people without power in Puerto Rico. Impacts, impacts, impacts. Houses falling in the ocean along the North Carolina Outer Banks. We've had deaths from rip currents in South Carolina. So yes, we have had a busy season so far. And this graph shows us where we should be going from here. So what's happening? Well, let's take a little trip back in time. This is really interesting. And this is the part where it is hard to believe. One year ago today, this is what I was tweeting. Well, there you have it. All of a sudden, the Atlantic Basin is very active. This was well forecast by most guidance as far back as April, and here we are. Isn't that interesting? Because that's what we have been saying about this year. And the guidance was suggesting as far back as March and April that 2024 would be very busy. But this isn't 2024. This is last year. And we had Emily out here. We had another area of disturbed weather. We had TD6. We had Franklin. This would go on to become Harold. What in the world? And all of that, need I remind you, was when we had an El Nino, a strong El Nino in the tropical Pacific, and yet we had this last year at this very time. So going back through the Twitter archives, this is what I was doing. I was in Yucca Valley. Why? That's California, by the way. Because Hillary had come into the southwest U.S., California, northwest Mexico, dumped a whole bunch of rain, flash flooding galore, high risk, lots of problems with that. And then I had to very quickly get on a plane in Phoenix, I flew in and out of Phoenix, and make my way over to the Gulf Coast, Corpus Christi to be specific, because Harold was part of that bell ringing a year ago, and there I was in Corpus Christi uh, on the 22nd. Took a couple days, obviously, but I got there. Harold made landfall, and then we had Idalia at the end of the month. And then really last year's season, for the most part, yes, there were some big hurricanes out there, but it kind of trailed off, and we did not have any significant impacts to the U.S. to speak of last year. So to put a little bit further explanation exclamation point on it, this is the graph graphical tropical weather outlook. It's the same one I cited in the tweet there, but this is what it looks like from the Hurricane Center site a year ago today, and here it is this day. And this is the background state. And not quite La Nina, but absolutely no El Nino. And yes, a record warm Atlantic still. There's the trail from Ernesto. And I also want to remind you that the Gulf of Mexico over here Saw a tweet earlier today from Brian McNoldy. We have officially hit the warmest upper ocean heat content value ever for the Gulf of Mexico on average. Like if you average all the temperature readings and whatnot, we just set a record. So what in the name of Sam Hill is going on? Well, the unscientific term for it is monkey wrench. Something has been thrown into the pattern that has thrown things off temporarily. Because again, let me remind you, because we are, as human beings, I think, so focused on what have you done for me lately, and what does it look like right now, that we forget about the past, and we lose sight of the future. We're so concentrated on the recent past, like 
few hours ago. And uh, what's happening right now that we do, I think at our own peril, lose sight of what could be coming around the corner. So let's remind you again, five name storms, 55A so far this year, all above the metrics. One major hurricane, the major hurricane usually isn't supposed to happen until I think September 7th on average. Uh, all three hurricanes have had significant impacts and everything is well above the normal metrics. Temporarily, we are in this lull. And with the background state that is very, very favorable on most metrics that we look at for activity to become very, very busy and very, very impactful. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's not about how many name storms and what categories they are there. It's about how they impact you. And already, Houston area impacted significantly. Southeast Caribbean impacted, impacted significantly. Uh, Puerto Rico, Northeast Caribbean impacted significantly. Bermuda, not as significantly. Uh, pretty significant with beach erosion and certainly the deaths here in South Carolina. And we are only up to August 20th. That's how you have to look at this. Not, well, it's blank right now, so they blew it. No, not necessarily. So why is it quiet right now? Great update here from Michael Lowry. And he is uh, saying what we're all thinking and talking about today that follow this stuff and that are in the business. And that is, yeah, today is the day when Bill Gray, the larger-than-life forefather of tropical meteorology, would ring his bell and he would literally do it. There's pictures of him. Phil, Dr. Klotzbach, will probably share one of those later today uh, when he has his two-week outlook put out. Uh, but today heralds the start of the prime time in hurricane season, normally. But this year, and I'll highlight it here, forecast models are muted this week. So today I discuss what's behind the delay. That's the link there. I will put a link to it. It's over here. I am not going to read it because that would be basically stealing his information and you got to read it yourselves. I can't hand feed you everything, but he goes over, Michael Lowry does, what is happening. So I invite you to read this. I'll put a link to it in today's update. Basically though, that unmeteorological, you know, unscientific term, monkey wrenches. There are some things going on that we can see and as important, or maybe more importantly, we can see when they are going to likely change. When will those barriers be removed or the monkey wrenches being, uh, when will they be pulled out of the machine, so to speak? And we think that's coming. So enjoy the next week to 10 days and I can show it to you here. Interestingly enough though, this is the um, 0 Z run of the GFS operational last night. And it did spring to life at the end of the period there. You can see it real quick. That, that's 384 hours out, but yes, that more reveals this a year ago on this coming up on September 5th. So the model is starting to sense some changes, but you know, even the 12Z today, not as enthusiastic as the 0Z, still some systems out there that we have to watch for. Uh, a big difference over last year. It is hard to believe, like I said, in the headline and whatnot, but look, Take it as a wonderful 10 or so day, hopefully, stretch of not having to worry about hurricanes. Because being real with you here, I do worry that we have this setup here that is going to remain undisturbed by tropical systems. 2020, uh, even last year, we had more of those junk storms that would come along they were short-lived, kind of weak, but they would at least take some heat content out. Over the next week to 10 days, we're not going to have much of anything at all, and all that water is just going to stay undisturbed, so that when the rubber band finally breaks, we have the risk that it whips back and gets us in the eye. And I'm very serious about that. Now, this is not some attempt to keep people engaged or keep people watching the videos. I care, but I care more about people being educated. It doesn't feed my ego. I don't have a million subscribers where I'm like, I am king of the hurricane videos. I don't care about that. I really don't. If I did, I'd put a whole lot more effort into clickbait and nonsense, and we just don't do that. But I do see the realistic background state that says, man, we are loaded for bear. Look at what we have had so far with favorable conditions. 
we're in this funk right now, and once we get out of it, there is the possibility. Of course, we don't know for sure. Maybe we get extremely lucky, and the rest of the season is like it is now, and a whole lot of people are going to have to do a whole lot of research into what went wrong. But if that is not the case, and history tells us that that won't be the case, um, somebody could be in a lot of trouble, especially with all this available energy out there. And like I've been showing you, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, as warm as it is, you know, would you rather be prepared or just say, ah, <laughs> the scientists don't know what they're talking about, and you're going to just get lucky? I would, I would say I'd rather be prepared. Because we've got the history to look back upon. It might be hard to believe now that that map right there, that background satellite shot, literally took that from the, whatever it is, the Noah Nesda site or however I got it. can't remember. It doesn't matter. NASA, whoever. And it's blank. Not much out there. Great now, but it might not last. Probably won't. Um, and so you better be on top of things. But, you know, at least between now and when the switch does flip, enjoy the quiet take a vacation, do something fun, maybe do some preps, whatever, and uh, we'll make sure we are ready when things do switch back around to looking like they were a year ago. All right? All right. That's all I got for you for today. As always, I do thank you for tuning in. It does matter to me, but again, yeah, the clickbait stuff and eh, whatever, I try not to do that and just tell you what I see and keep it real. And today, it's nice and blank out there, so enjoy. From all of us at the Hurricane Track community, we appreciate you watching. I am Mark Suttoth. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.